study on the book of John. We hope po that you have been enjoying the discussion and sharing about the book of John. So last previous lesson po natin, as taught by Brother Bobot, pinag-usapan po natin ang John chapter 7 verses 53 hanggang John chapter 8 verse 11. At doon po ay natutunan natin na meron pong pinresent ang mga religious leaders na isang adulteress po sa ating Panginoong Jesus. And we talked about how instead of saying anything, Jesus kneeled down and wrote on the floor at chinalin niyo po ang mga Pharisees that those who have no sin should throw the first stone at her. At nakita po natin na one by one sila po ay nagsialisan until only Jesus and the woman was left. And so in this um, story po, in this chapter, in these passages po, uh, nakita po natin how Jesus showed grace to the woman by not acting according to what the Pharisees expected him to do, which was actually to stone her. But he urged the woman not to sin anymore and he let her go. And such is the lesson po for us Christians today that although we are living under the grace of God, let us not misuse the grace of God by continuing continuing to live in sin, but let us po in gratefulness to this great grace of God live our lives forsaking all sin, forsaking all temptations to follow Him faithfully. And so tonight po, we will be tackling John chapter 8 verses 12 to 59. Medyo mahaba po ating passage for tonight, but I believe that as we open up our hearts and as we let, you know, the Holy Spirit to speak to us, I believe po that this passage will uh, bear in your heart a personal message, a personal revelation straight from the throne of God. And so, um, Without further ado po, basahin po natin. If you have your Bibles with you, let us turn to the book of John, chapter 8, verses 12 to 59. Ang gagamitin ko po ay English Standard Version. John, chapter 8, verse 12, verses 12 to 59. So, medyo mahaba po siya, so please bear with me. I'll be reading from verse 12 to 59 onwards. So, from verse 12, Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, You are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, Even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. Verse 17. In your law it is written that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, therefore, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. And these words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. So he said to them again, I am going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said to him, Will he kill himself? Since he, since he says, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Just what I have been telling you from the beginning. I have much to say about you and much to judge, but he who sent me is true. And I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he had been speaking to them about the Father. Verse 28. So Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he... He who sent me is with me. 
He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. Verse 31, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, but the son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing what your father did. And they said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Verse 42, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Verse 47, whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon. Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet that I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Verse 54, Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Verse 58, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And in verse 59, So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray, Paul. A short word of prayer before we continue our lesson. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for your presence that is with us. We thank you, Lord, for your word that teaches us and leads us back to the truth that you are the light of the world, that there is no other light apart from you. There is no other truth apart from you. And Lord, today, as we study your word, may you open up our hearts, O God, Panginoon, mangusap po kayo, Lord, sa amin. We pray, Father God, na, Lord, you will touch every heart and you will speak to every person that is watching this video tonight. And Lord God, above everything and above all, O God, may you alone be glorified, may you alone be pleased as we study your word today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. As we read po in a very long passage just now in John chapter 8, verses 12 to 59, we saw um, two things po now na we need to take note of po now. So just as a way of background po, chapter 7 and 8 happened during the Feast of Tabernacles. 
during the Feast of Tabernacles. So, yung context po ng chapter 7 to 8 po, it happened during one of the festivals that the Israelites uh, were instructed to keep and to adhere to and to celebrate by God himself. Okay, and this feast is called the Feast of Tabernacles. So, each evening during the Feast of Tabernacles, po, four big lamps were lit in the temple to bring light to the whole area. But what exactly po, is the Feast of Tabernacles? In in the original Hebrew po, in in in, in uh, Hebrew po, ang tawag po sa kanilang feast na ito ay Sukkot. Sukkot. So ito po ay isang festival na sinecelebrate po ng mga Israelita. Ito po ay na, this was instructed by God uh, to the Israelites to keep in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 33 to 44. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33 to 44. So when you have the time and you're reviewing your notes from tonight, please do uh, read up in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 33 to 44 to better understand what the Feast of Tabernacle is. So it is a festival that lasts for seven days. And in those seven days, po, they are instructed and commanded by God to, to, to dwell or to stay in booths. Just like how their ancestors dwelled in tents or booths during their time in the wilderness. Diba po, we remember how Moses led them out of Egypt. And you know, they went through uh, 40 years in the wilderness before they reached the promised land. And in those 40 years, they were staying in temporary uh, places. You know, and that's why the booths are made up of things that pwede pong ipaklas. You know, um, things that you can uh, undo. So the 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 feast of the, of the tabernacles it was to serve as a reminder for the Israelites how God brought them out of Egypt and provided for their every need as they made their way to the promised land. So like just now po na mention ko po that four big lamps would be lit every night. And what does this symbolize po? What is the big significance about uh, lighting the four lamps? This was actually to remind the Israelites that the presence of God filled the temple. That this was the visible presence of God. And it was also as a way to foreshadow or to kind of prophesy about the coming of the great light, which is in Hebrew po, ha Haor Gadol. Haor Gadol, which was referring to the Messiah. You know, and we will uh, tackle po the exact verse that it says there. So, in this context po that Jesus makes his second I am statement, you first po na discuss po natin in John chapter 6 verse 35 where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Here in verse 12 of John chapter 8, Jesus makes a very bold statement and he says there, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of of light. Hindi po coincidence or by chance lang po ang pagsabi ni Jesus sa statement na ito during the Feast of Tabernacles when they would be lighting up the four big lamps. He did this deliberately so that the Jewish people will understand that hey, this was the prophesied great light, the Haor Gadol that we have been looking forward to in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. So let's read from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2, it says there, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, Haor Gadol. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. So this great light that was being referred to in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2, and which the Feast of Tabernacle has been foreshadowing or has been prophesying, the act of lighting up this lamp, it was to prepare the way for this great light to come. And so this great light is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Isaiah 49 verse 6, it says there, He says, it is, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserve of Israel. 
and I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. And this light for the nations is referring to none other than the Messiah. And the Messiah, as we see here in John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus was saying that, hey, I am the light of the world. I am the one that was prophesied in the Old Testament by the prophets. I am the light of of the nations. I am the light of the world. I am the great light. And so Jesus was trying to tell them explicitly that he is the light of the world. He is the light that does not die. He is the light that can never be overcome by darkness. Like what we read through Paul in the first chapter in the book of John, in John chapter 1 verse 5, it says there that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The darkness has not defeated this light. Glory to God. Jesus, the light of the world, cannot be defeated, cannot be overcome by darkness. And this is the same God that we worship and that we believe in today. Praise God that Jesus is the light of the world. That when we have accepted Jesus into our lives, we have accepted this light which gives us abundant life. And so going back po, to the conversations of uh, the conversation of Jesus with the Pharisees, Jesus made it crystal clear, very plain po, right in their faces, I am the light of the world. Explicitly. But the funny thing is for the Pharisees did not want to believe in Jesus, did not want to believe that he is the Messiah. They did not want to believe that he is the light of the world that has been prophesied and that has come. So what did they do? They challenged the declaration of Jesus. Why? Because under their law, under the Levitical law, um, he, a person cannot be his own witness. So for example, Paul, in, in Example, uh, let us imagine me being in court, you know, you, I cannot say I am the witness and I am the only one who will say that I am innocent, you know. So in their law, po, a person cannot be his own witness. Dapat meron pong dalawa or tatlong witnesses po kung may issues po na kailangan i-resolve or to testify that the statement being said by this particular person is true. And so if we see in like what is mentioned in John chapter 8 verse 17, in your law it is written that the testimony of two men is true. So when there are two or three witnesses that says, hey, this person is telling the truth, it is already considered as the truth. It will not be questioned. So let's look Paul in Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 6. It says there on the evidence of two witnesses or of three witnesses, the one who is to die shall be put to death. A person shall not be put to death on the evidence of one witness. And so this was referring to the, the, the guilt, you know, the guilty party. Now, if the guilty party, you know, is considered guilty by not just one witness, but by two or three witnesses, then he shall be put to death. And so, you know, Jesus insisted that he is actually exempted from this rule. Kung babasahin po natin ulit dito, in uh, verse... In verse 14... Jesus answered, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and I know where I'm going, but you do not know where I come from or where I am going. And in verse 18, I am the one who bears witness about myself and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. And so Jesus was saying that he is exempted from this rule because he knows where he came from. Alam po niya saan po siya ng galing. And where did he come from? He came from heaven. And where he was going, he knew where he was going, which is heaven. And the Lord Jesus also mentioned na yung pinaka-crucial, pinaka-vital na witness po niya, that we will say, yes, he is telling the truth, is none other than God the Father who sent him, as we have read just now in verse 16. So he states, Paul, that he only declares what he has heard from the Father in verse 26. In verse 26, it says there, I have much to say about you and much to judge, but he who sent me is true. And I declare to the world 
what I have heard from him. So when Jesus said that he only declares what he has heard from the Father, at wala po siyang sinabi na hindi po totoo, o lihis sa kalooban ng Diyos Ama, glory to God. Lahat po na naririnig po natin sa salita ng Diyos, lahat po na nababasa po natin sa kanyang salita, lahat po ito ay totoo. Jesus bore witness to himself because the Father also bore witness that he is truly the light of the world. He is the Messiah. And so, we can believe every word that comes from the word of God. We can believe every promise that the word of God states to us, that the word of God gives to us. Jesus said po in Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, Matthew 24, verse 35, Ang langit at ang lupa ay maglalaho, ngunit ang mga salita ko ay mananatili magpakailanman. Heaven and earth, shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. Mananatili magpakailanman. Ang salita ng Diyos. Praise God. We can rely and we can trust on the everlasting word of God. Lahat po ng sinabi ng Panginoong Jesus ay totoo. Praise God. So kung babalikan po natin ang verse 29 of John chapter 8. Ano po ba ang sinasabi sa verse 29 of John chapter 8? In verse 29, And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. In verse 29, Jesus says that God the Father is always with him, for he does what pleases the Father. The presence of God was always with Jesus. Why? Because he did what pleased the Father. The anointing and the power of God was always upon Jesus because He did what God the Father wanted Him to do. So kung makikita po natin, if there is something that we can glean from that po, one of the truths that we can glean from that po is that God's anointing and God's power rests upon those who strive to do what pleases Him. The anointing and power of God will rest upon you when you strive to do what pleases God. And because Jesus is the pure-hearted, sinless truth-teller as what is said in verse 46 of John chapter 8. Ano po ba sabi doon sa verse 46? Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He has been telling the truth. And he is the truth. In John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is why the glory and the power of God never left him because he always said, he always did what God the Father asked him to do and asked him to say. Hindi po siya, hindi po siya, he did not stray from the will of God. He did not stray from the commandments of God. What God asked him to do, he did it exactly the way God the Father asked him to do. So kung ditinan po natin, sa conversation po na ito in John chapter 8 verses 12 hanggang 59, the conversation po ni Jesus with the Pharisees, what is the difference between the statements of Jesus and the statements of the Pharisees. Jesus was saying, I'm the light of the world. And, you know, saying that um, the Pharisees were not true sons of Abraham. So, itakal po natin yung part na yun, no? So, ang main difference po na makikita po natin dito ay ang mga Pharisee po ay nag-claim na ama nila si Abraham. At ito nga po ay dahil sa kanilang nat natutunan. Okay? Pero hindi po nila ginagawa yung ginawa po ni ni Abraham. So ano po ba yung nire-refer dito na ginawa ni Abraham? What did Abraham do? What were the works that he did? If we look at verse 39, they answered him, the Pharisees answered Jesus, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. So what exactly did Abraham did? If we look at Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, Abraham believed the Lord and it was counted to him as righteousness. What was the thing that Abraham did? It was that Abraham believed in the Lord. Abraham, unlike the religious leaders, unlike the Pharisees, 
believed in the promise of the Lord and believed in the prophecy spoken to him by God the Father. And because the Pharisees would not and did not believe that Jesus was the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, they cannot truly say that they, they are Abraham's children. They cannot truly say that Abraham is their father for their actions showed otherwise. Because if we see an example dito, no, we will know someone based on how they act. And usually po, our behavior and, and what we do and our beliefs po, is largely shaped, apart from the word of God, is largely shaped to how our parents are. And so if we see here, um, Jesus was telling them that, hey, you are not truly the sons of Abraham because you did not do, you're not doing what Abraham did. And what did Abraham do? Abraham believed in the prophecies. Abraham believed in the promise of God. And so unlike Abraham, they did not believe. And because of their stubborn unbelief, who did Jesus say was their real father? So let's read from verse 42 to 47 po. No? Sino po ba ang totoong uh, ama ng mga Pharisees na ito? 42 to 47. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's. He was a murderer from the beginning. I'm reading from verse 44. And has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the, and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? And verse 47, whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Very harsh, po, no? it's very on point. Jesus told, said to the religious Pharisees that their real father was the devil. Why? Because they did not believe in Jesus. Nakatakot pala po, no? Na if we look at the Pharisees, they knew a lot about the Old Testament. They knew a lot about the Word of God. But they did not believe. And they were not considered sons of Abraham. They were not considered children of God, but instead sons of the devil because they did not believe in Jesus. So what does that say for us today? You know, modern Christians, modern day Christians, it, it tells us that we can know a lot about the Bible. We can be the most religious. Pwede po tayong pinaka malakas sumigaw during worship. Tayo, tayo po ang pwede pinaka malakas po malakpak. You know, we can have a lot of knowledge about the Bible. Pero kung wala po tayong personal at intimate na pagkakilala sa Panginoong Jesus, baka maging katulad po tayo sa mga fariseyo. Madaming alam pero wala po palang kaligtasan. We can know a lot about the Bible. But if we do not apply the word of God, if we do not believe and have a personal relationship with Jesus, it is just plain old religion. And sabi po sa John chapter 3 verse 18, whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And that was John chapter 3 verse 18. But in believing po, we also have to act out on our belief because in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 it reminds us that not everyone who says to God who says to the Lord 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 will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven Jesus said explicitly clearly in Matthew 7:21 that only those who does the will of God the Father will enter the kingdom of heaven and so, ang totoong anak po ng Diyos ay sumusunod sa mga utos po ng Diyos. The Pharisees knew a lot about the Bible, but they did not apply it. They did not obey what 
the word of God was saying. They had a lot of self-righteousness and pride, so much so that they did not believe Jesus was the Messiah, even though Jesus was so clear that he is the light of the world. Ang sabi nga po ni Jesus sa kanila in Matthew chapter 23, verse 15. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, Matthew 23, verse 15. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites! For you cross land and sea to make one convert, and then you turn that person into twice the child of hell you yourselves are. And so Jesus was exposing the Pharisees for their hypocrisy, at ang kanilang wrong understanding of what it means to be a child of Abraham. To come to the light of Jesus, to believe in Jesus, is to be a true son of Abraham. Dahil kahit po si Abraham, he looked forward sa pagdating po ng Mesias, ang Panginoong Jesus. So God promised that through Abraham, all nations will be blessed. And that's taken from John, uh, from Genesis, sorry, Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, where God promised Abraham, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And in Genesis chapter 22, verses 17 to 18, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Let us take note, po, no? in Genesis 22, 17 to 18, that it did not refer to offsprings, hindi po plural, but singular. Your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring... Genesis 22, verse 18, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So who is this offspring? In Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, it gives us the answer to that. Who is this offspring? Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offsprings. Who is Christ and to your offspring who is Christ. So Jesus Christ is whom, through whom all nations will be blessed. Totoo po na only through Jesus will we receive real blessings in life. Only through Jesus will we receive um, salvation. Only through Jesus are we truly blessed. And so to conclude our lesson for tonight, Paul, I would like to read again John chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. So we learned a lot, Paul, tonight. We learned about how Jesus was very explicit about him and his claim of, of being the Messiah. That he is the light of the world. And we also talked about how being a real child of God, being a real uh, son of Abraham, is to believe in Jesus. And we also talked about how, you know, religiosity as showcased by the Pharisees, will not save us, but only, you know, believe in Jesus Christ, only by believing in Jesus Christ, only by accepting Him as our Lord and Savior. Are we saved? Are we considered children of God? And so, Paul, I would like to conclude by reading John chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. In John chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, it says there, In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And so there is only one giver of true life, and that is none other than Jesus. There is only one light of the world, and that is Jesus. That is only, only Jesus is the light of the world. Only Jesus is the word of God, and only Jesus is the giver of true life. And so, Paul, I hope that we have learned something uh, new tonight from our sharing of John chapter 8, verses 12 to 59. So without further ado, Paul, let us pray and let us close our session tonight with a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads and close our eyes. Hallelujah. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa reminder na kayo po, Lord, ang ilaw ng mundo. You are the light of the world. Father God, we pray that you would continue, O oh God, to shed light in our hearts, O oh God, as we open up our hearts and as we open up our lives to you, O oh God. 
Holy Spirit of the living God, thank you for speaking to us individually tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your word that has reminded us, O oh God, that, Lord, you are the Messiah. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. And God, I pray in Jesus' name that whoever is hearing the sound of my voice and has watched this video tonight, whatever needs they have, Father God, physical, oh Lord, a spiritual, uh, um, Lord, in terms, even Lord, in terms of provision, Father God, or healing, I thank you, Lord God, because Lord, in you is life. We thank you, Lord, that we have fullness of life in you. Thank you, Lord, that you provide for our every need, Father God will heal and make us whole father god through lord the promise that you gave us oh god in isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 oh god that by your stripes we are healed father god we thank you for your word tonight and god we pray that you will continue god to speak to us we pray that you will continue god to lord um protect us and, and protect our family members lord and even provide for all of our needs salamat po panginoon in jesus name we pray amen so thank you once again, Paul, for joining us for the nightly study in the book of John. We hope and pray that each and every one of you watching this has gained a deeper understanding of this book. And that we hope, Paul, that you will continue this journey of diving deep into God's Word. Have a blessed night.